guys. Uh, we just crossed into Bluff, Utah. Um, I realized as I saw the sign that I had been saying on my last talk that we're in Arizona the whole time, but we're not. We're in Utah. We're in Moab, Utah. And uh, we're still in Utah, but we will be heading to Arizona. Um, I can already tell that we're getting closer and closer to uh, Valley of the Gods just by the amazing buttes that have been showing up as we've been driving through here. And uh, of course you guys saw that arch uh, on, the, on the drive here leaving Moab. And that arch uh, we've crossed many, many times. We've got photos by it uh, tons of times. And every time I drive past it, I just get a nostalgic feeling because I remember our first time driving through there with the RV when we were much younger and seeing that. And uh, no matter how many times I see it, it's still as beautiful as the first time. And so is this area. The desert is um, really one of those places that if you look at it, you might think that there's not a lot to do. But uh, as for me, whenever I come into any sort of desert escape, I always feel like doing a lot more. Um, there's so many activities here if you're an athletic person or if you like uh, you know, motorized travel of any kind. Like mountain biking is something we've done a lot of in this area. Of course, with our motorcycles and overlanding rigs, there's tons of camping. And there actually is a lot to do. So they're definitely worth coming to, even just for the views, even if you're just driving through on pavement roads. Um, it's something completely different. This whole area just looks like Mars or at least what you'd think Mars would look like, and it's uh, just really beautiful. But I'm looking forward to getting into the Valley of the Gods and uh, explaining a bit more about the Jeep. I also realized that I forgot to mention um, what was wrong with the Jeep and uh, what we're doing to fix it. So I'll do that quickly. Um, like I said earlier, I'm not a like statistics person or, you know, like I don't know much about uh, vehicle internals, but I'll explain it the best I can. Um, so after the crash, uh, apparently something to do with the like axle, the front axle got damaged. Um, I believe it's something to do with the fourth gear or a four wheel drive shaft that got damaged. Um, although we're not exactly sure. Uh, we took it into Dark Horse in Bozeman, Montana and they uh, gave us the all clear that as long as we're in two wheel drive and we get it repaired soon, it uh, should be fine. And as long as you're in two wheel drive, it drives completely normal. Um, now that the alignment is fixed, uh, it feels like the good old Jeep again, which I'm really happy about, but uh, we can't use four wheel drive right now. So that's the only issue. Um, if you go on to uh, our family channel, the Epic Family Road Trip, I'm sure It'll be explained a bit better but uh, we do have repair uh, like spare parts for what's broken and uh, we'll be getting it fixed as soon as we get into Sedona but for now we'll just have to deal with two-wheel drive most of these trails uh, the Jeep should handle totally fine so uh, we don't really need it right now but we definitely want to get that fixed as soon as possible Well guys, as you can see in the distance coming up is the Valley of the Gods. It's uh, It's got similar buttes to Monument Valley, but in my opinion it's even more beautiful um, and it's way less populated. Like when you go there there's way less people, there's less tourism, and um, it's a more beautiful drive in my opinion. So I can't wait to show you guys and uh, I hope you enjoy seeing this. Here we are guys, just pulled off the highway. Um, it's just a little turn off onto a dirt road. And then you're on the Valley of the Gods trail, which is an absolutely stunning drive with lots of camp spots along the way. So uh, let's get right into it.
All right, guys, so we're gonna pull over. I'm gonna talk with my parents and see what uh, the plan is for today. Um, since we all have to edit and uh, upload a video for tomorrow, uh, we might just find one of the more basic flatter camping spots since the RV is still traveling with us and then uh, do all that tonight and then head deeper in tomorrow or we might head in deeper tonight. I'm gonna see what, uh, what everyone's feeling and then I'll let you guys know. Either way, I'm looking forward to a beautiful camp and uh, hopefully a good meal. So we'll see what's going on. I know there's a few, but I can go look for one. That, our usual one, I don't think the RV could go to, sadly. Well, we don't want to go in too far. Okay. Just for one night. Like, if there's one just around the corner and the RV can get similar to this, that's all we need. All right. I'll go check. Uh, I don't know if you can call. You might have to I'll come back. All right, so I'm going to go find us a camp spot. Um... Depending on, I'm, I'm going to look at the footage and see how much work needs to be done. And uh, if not too much needs to be done, I'll go for a drive and show you guys tonight, or I'll just do it in the morning. Either way, bam! I am excited to be here again. Uh, so many fond memories of this area. And the last time I was here, I was actually on my motorcycle. And all the previous times, I was. Uh, this looks good. All the previous times, I was too young to drive so I've done on my motorcycle now and uh, now I'll be doing it in a Jeep so it's pretty exciting I think I found a good camp spot for us I'm just gonna drive in and check it out to see if the RV could fit there a little bit bumpy getting in but uh, looks pretty nice Ooh Look at that view. This is why I love Utah and Arizona. All right, so that spot looks uh, suitable. It's definitely got a beautiful view. Um, it's a bit rocky getting in, but once you're in there, it's nice and flat. So I'll see if uh, this works for them. It's really nice to be camping with the whole family again, even though uh, the RV is kind of know stopping us from getting to some of the usual spots we go to um, it's actually really cozy having it and like I said I'm not a vehicle guy I'm not a trail guy I enjoy both but for me it's just about uh, you know the traveling experience and being with the whole family is awesome I'm really enjoying it there's a spot like right down the road it's a little bit bumpy getting in but then it's perfectly flat and round and big we can have all three of us yeah. I'll follow you. The nice thing about this trail is it does have bumpy sections, but uh, you could definitely still do it. I've seen even some like little two-wheel drive cars making it through here, so it's basically accessible to everybody. If you have an off-road vehicle, then awesome. There's tons of people with trailers and RVs that do this road and find pull-offs like we're doing. And uh, if you have a motorcycle, do it on that because it's just a totally different experience. You just feel so small driving through the buttes and I uh, really recommend it. All right guys, so we're leaving our little camp here at Valley of the Gods. Just uh, spent the night we didn't have a fire or anything, we just edited up our videos. And then now this morning, we're gonna be heading out into the Valley of the Gods a little bit deeper. And I'll be able to sh show you guys what I was talking about last time. Uh, like I mentioned, we've been here a few times and uh, no matter how many times we come back, it's still just as beautiful as ever. It's very aptly named the Valley of the Gods. And uh, yeah, so we'll take a look and uh, take you guys along with us. Thank you. 
wow i every time i do this drive i'm just amazed by the beautiful buttes and uh they're just endless views like as far as you can look in any direction is just a beautiful sight lando it's okay you can run in a bit okay sit um but it feels nice to be here with the new truck as you've seen in front of me um like i said i'm not a statistics or logistics guy uh so even now i don't know too too much about the make and model um i do know a bit about the ross monster back on it but if you guys want to know all the information and uh the weight specs and everything like that then check out our the video on epic family road trip where we go into depth talking with the guys from ross monster about their product and about our new truck and it is absolutely amazing we've had it for a few days now as we we're driving down um even in last week's video that's why i couldn't really film forward was we were trying to keep that a secret until now but um i've been looking at it i haven't stayed in it personally but my parents have and it is just an amazing rig and i'm really looking forward to putting it through some good uh, endurance tests in the upcoming years but it is a uh it's a ford i believe 350 and it, the interior is something we're not used to in jeeps um i love jeeps and i'll talk about why in a second but since we've been in jeeps for a long time i'm not used to the cabin space that a truck has and uh like the luxury um seats and they're a lot quieter when you're driving as well that's one thing i noticed you can have a conversation in them uh quite a bit easier than you can in a jeep and lando's breathing directly on the mic so you guys can probably hear that he was just going for a nice big long run here in the desert so he's all sweaty but uh then keep your tongue away from the mic okay um personally i'm still more of a jeep guy i love the idea of that and i've uh i've looked at rigs like that in vans for my own uh future at some point um just you know for obvious comfort reasons and editing reasons and stuff like that but uh, i'm still i love jeeps uh, even though they're loud and they're not quite as comfortable then <laughs> as some of the other rigs out there um i mean like you guys heard in last video this can't go in four-wheel drive at all right now and i'm still doing pretty off-road trails uh, and have been for the past couple days and the jeep is still crawling up and like anything else even in two-wheel drive so that's something i love about the jeeps but uh after we've had this thing for a while and we do more trails with it then uh i'll give you guys a more in-depth um thought on like what i prefer and what i think about both of the items both of the vehicles So as you saw there, there are a few sections of this trail that might be a little bit more difficult in your uh, typical two-wheel drive car, but uh, it's definitely possible. I've seen a lot of them going through here. You just have to take your time and uh, be careful about it because you don't want to get stuck out here. Luckily, there is a quite a bit of traffic of like side-by-sides, off-road vehicles, motorcycles. So even if you did get stuck, uh, the chances are you wouldn't have to wait too long before somebody could help you, but you would just want to avoid that at any cost, of course. Um, if you have a buddy with a truck or something that can drive with you, then all is better. But uh, it is definitely, like, you can get through here if you if you really want on a two-wheel drive uh, vehicle. Another great thing that I love about the Valley of the Gods is uh, the amount of camping spots along the way. Even though this is a popular area and there are um, definitely going to be some other campers out here with you, uh, they're all spaced out so you're, bit, you know, you're not like joint together, you're not having to worry about uh, neighbors or anything. And there are literally hundreds of camping spots along the way and they all have their own unique um, things about them you can either camp more into the desert plateau area of the fields or you can come right into the buttes which i'm driving into right now which is usually where we like to camp um and the nice thing is like i said about them all being different is you can come here multiple times and camp in different spots and it feels like you're in totally different areas you never get tired of this place we're coming up um, to one of our favorite camping spots we've camped here quite a lot we also camped here when we were with uh 
Sean from the story till now when we came driving through this area and it's just off to our right. I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you properly because it's kind of tucked around a butte but uh, if you ever come here that's the spot I recommend. You will need a four-wheel drive vehicle at least and it's not RV friendly just because it's kind of on a slant with a cliff on the other side. But if you get through there, then you get up right next to the view on a beautiful camping spot. And in my opinion, it's definitely worth it if you like that sort of uh, campground area. drive reminds me a lot of some of my favorite old western films like Stagecoach and uh, The Searchers which were all filmed in this area a bit closer to Monument Valley but um, I'm pretty sure it was either in Monument Valley or it might have been here but uh, one of the Indiana Jones movies was also filmed in this area and it's a very you can you it's easy to tell why they chose this location is it's just such a beautiful uh, scenic area you can film in 360 and like as you can see behind me over there there's an insane view just sticking out of the ground but uh, it's always neat driving through an area that uh, is from one of your favorite movies kind of puts you right in there with it but uh, Looks like we just came up to a sandier spot of the trail. We're gonna see if we can make it through. Two wheel drive's not the best situation. The tires are still pretty full of air, but uh, I think the Jeep will be able to crawl through just fine. But up there where that guy's camped is uh, our favorite camping spot. I have some footage um, of the one right beside it with the motorcycles when me and Peter camped here last time. And I'll show you some of that just so you can get an idea of what uh, it looks like. But as you can see, it is a beautiful area to camp.
I just saw two adventure bikes go driving by. One was a KTM 1290 and the other one was, uh, I believe it was an Africa Twin um, Honda. But man, that got me excited. It reminded me of the last time me and Peter were driving through here on our adventure bikes. And uh, man, I can't wait to get those things and head out on the trails. But uh, we turned around now and we're headed back to the RV. Sadly, we won't be able to do the entire um, trail here just because the RV definitely could not make it uh, all the way to the end. Uh, could You can take an RV very far into here and through all the places we went, but uh, just not up the last hill, I don't think. But um, it was just nice to get in here and take a look. We got some photos of the new trucks and some uh, videos as well. And now we're gonna be headed to Goosenecks State Park. And uh, we'll show you guys another one of Utah's beautiful sights. guys we're back on the road and headed towards Gooseneck State Park. See you guys there. Well it looks like my memory's a little bit off. Uh, that was literally three seconds of driving. So apparently Goosenecks is a lot closer to Valley of the Gods than I remembered it. But you literally just pull off the road, you drive five minutes down the road, you turn off into Goosenecks State Park. And uh, that just shows what Utah is like. You go from one like national treasure to the other five minutes away. Alright guys, so we found our camp spot. We're all parked and ready for tonight. Um, my parents are going to head into a uh, Mexican hat just to pick up some firewood and other things for camp. And then uh, we'll have ourselves a nice little sleep here and then continue on our way to Arizona. Can't wait to show you guys this place.
All right, so we had a beautiful camp here last night at uh, Gooseneck State Park. We're gonna keep on the road and make our way to Sedona. Well guys, that was Goosenecks. Um, sorry I wasn't able to show too much of it, but uh, kind of happy that way almost because that way you guys can get a little teaser and see what it looks like. But um, there's still a lot for you guys to see if you ever make it out here. That's uh, still a surprise. So if you're ever in the area, it's definitely worth a stop. Um, you don't even have to camp here, just pull up and look at it. It's definitely worth it. But uh, I'm not exactly sure how far it is to Salome. If we're gonna make it there today or not. But I'm excited to get there just so that I can start more planning out my trips and my videos and uh, hopefully get some more complete stories because in this sort of mode of travel, it's kind of hard for me to, you know, find out what's worth filming and what you guys want to see, um, because it's a lot of driving and uh, the plans are changing constantly. But once they're there, I'll be able to decide, you know, like, hey, this week we're doing this trail and this is the history and all that stuff, or we're visiting this town or seeing this monument, whatever it is. And uh, hopefully it'll be a bit easier to follow along, but. I still hope you guys are enjoying these videos and uh, yeah, see you guys in Salome. Alrighty guys, that's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching and make sure to stay tuned for uh, my upcoming videos because we're going to be getting the bikes here real soon. I'm pretty sure they even uh, arrive here either tomorrow or the next day. So uh, we'll be able to take those out on trails very, very soon. And I'm really excited about that. And uh, of course, we'll be doing uh, some more truck and Jeep adventures as well. And just lots of really exciting things now that uh, we're here in Arizona. So yeah, stay tuned. And um, a special thank you to those of you who have subscribed to my Patreon channel. There's uh, more and more of you guys every day and it really helps promote the channel and it helps me to keep uh to be able to keep doing what i'm doing so thanks a lot for that and as always i'll see you guys next week